so hello guys uh, today you know i'm kind of an honor to host uh, some person who is a role model for me as well and especially after reading his book you know it's a lot of inspiration that has come inside me you know it has stuck on a number of things you know especially from the personal finance angle you know taking care of your mental health taking care of your relationships how can you be more yourself right and and not be somebody else you know him pretty well but still i would like to give you a brief introduction about him sandeep has been working in a strategy consulting for the past more than 10 years now he has been working for pwc for 3 years 7 months to be exact he was working for accenture strategy for over 7 years and he has been a prolific writer so there are three books of him which are there inside the market and we are going to take notes from all of them you know one by one we welcome you sandeep over here and thank you for taking your time on this thank weekend uh to interact with with all of us with all the youngsters specifically because you know it needs a lot of it needs a lot of you know uh, you know acha sandeep you know so i would like to ask you one thing right you know hmm. you told one inside the book these are my two books these are my three books and i am going to do marketing for them advertising for them seamlessly so <laughs> why am i asking you this is that because jab hum log sales mein aaye the this was mm-hmm. the one thing which my boss told to me ki rishikesh jab site pe ja raha ho kahi bhi ja raha ho be a shameless guy like pehle year do saal mein kuch mat socho uske baad bhi kuch mat socho if you keep on doing like this you will become a great professional your view point on that especially for young guys who are joining joining the company yeah yeah first of all uh, thank you rishikesh for the opportunity it is uh, it is great to uh, speak to you and uh, i think when you are in the field of creative arts whether it's writing speaking cooking physical education any of this you have to be shameless and i think it's valid for corporate also you have to shamelessly market yourself you know there is no point in having uh, false modesty if you have made a good product you need to go and tell the world that look i have a good product i mean even the iphone which is probably the best phone that is around apple does a lot of shameless marketing so there is no, no, nothing there is nothing wrong in going and telling people look i have a fantastic book or a fantastic product please go and buy it there is nothing wrong in it and everybody should do it uh, everybody should do it as long as you don't harm anybody else's chances you should definitely do it and you know one thing after i read this line i called six of my friends i told them <laughs> this is this is sandeep das for you who is working inside the industry for more than 12 years and if he can write it like this why are we shameful for doing you know uh, the different things which we actually want to do and just because of this shame we actually invest you know waste a lot of time just thinking about it ki kya hoga true 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 right i just sandeep you know usually uh, this thing will come out of you know people working in consulting ki consulting bahut busy hai yaar client ke office mein baithna padta hai you know it's a very you know tedious task especially in the beginning of your career and even after that once you get into you know higher profile as well so how did you manage time for writing or writing ka keeda kab aaya see the question i get asked a lot so in terms of how i have managed consulting is a very difficult career in terms of work life balance so i get up early every morning i uh, typically get up around uh, 4:30 4:45 and i give that uh, first 2 3 hours in the morning to all of this i've been doing this for the last uh, decade or so and that is how i have uh, spent so much time so if you and to to all the people listening to this uh, session if you give 2 3 hours to your uh, to your passion every day for over a period of 10 years you will obviously you will obviously do something very well in life i th- i think that's that's the trick uh, you obviously need a lot of social support you need support from your friends family because uh, it's a difficult line to be in Uh, to give you an example about i've been in this line the secondary career line for about 11 years and uh, the first 9 years actually was largely flat and a lot of uh, what you see has happened has happened over the last 2 years so uh, and all of you when you pursue a career like this you'll see the first 7 8 years will be very muted just a few uh, stories of success here and there and then it suddenly just stops kicking off so uh, during that first 7 8 years you need a lot of support from friends and family saying that keep going keep going etc but getting up early in the morning is a big uh, part of the success agar aap writing ke keede ke bare mein baat kare to i i think uh, when after finishing business school i uh, was doing a sales and marketing and i used to have very funny anecdotes you know, when you start to in rural india you'll meet different kind of people uh, when you do marketing you'll meet different kind of people and 
uh, that's when i thought uh, these are fantastic stories and i should start and that's what the genesis of my first book was your sarcastically that's how it uh, started off so i have not had any uh, i not had any formal uh, training or formal education in writing and speaking and i can i don't think anyone listening to this call should know that you don't need any formal education when it comes to writing anyone can yeah so waking up at 5 o'clock has been mentioned by number of people on on the number of books written 5 am club hai you know a number yeah. of books written on that even i was reading one book by amit agrawal you know uh, it's on sales so he was also talking about you know how waking up at 5 o'clock actually changed his life as well and even i have started doing it you know for the past 2 uh, 3 weeks after you know i went through that book and this book and one thing which i found which i found out is that your energy level goes significantly up if you wake up at 5 o'clock and it's somewhat related to the hindu mythology as well jisme brahma muhurat ka baat karte hai you know we talk about that if you wake up at 4:30 5 o'clock you know you are in sync with the universe so do you believe on all these indian mythology which is there do you do, do you anyway try uh, try to relate the things which is happening in your life with something which is written inside uh, you know uh, the indian sculptures uh no, no my knowledge of mythology is very poor so i don't i don't relate to it i'm sorry i should read up more on mythology but my knowledge is very poor the re- the reason i started doing it to be honest is, is not because of mythology the reason i started doing it is uh, i wanted to give time to this and if uh, after a long day at work you can't spend time on this at 11 in the night 11 to 1 in the night it just the head doesn't work so that's when i started uh, turning the cycle i also used to hear a lot about Uh, I actually heard this uh, the first time I think with the rock Wayne Johnson that he used to get up at 3:30 and that's in a way how he turned his career that's the first time I'd heard about it. he was the first famous story I think and that's how I gave it a shot it started working but it's not easy also because it means you have to sleep at 9:30 or 10 or 10:30 every day and doing that every day is also not easy so it, the discipline is very hard but it's uh, it's very productive Yeah. And being a good writer does it require to be a good reader does it require to read a lot of books I see uh, I think what it need, definitely short answer is definitely because uh, as a writer yourself you will need to learn and there is uh, no better way to read others books you'll pick up you'll pick up nuances of how other style their words how story plots are it is reading definitely help if uh, you are an aspiring writer the other thing that has helped me a lot is actually watching a lot of movies and sitcoms so i've watched movies of christopher nolan all the leading directors producers most of sitcoms you watch because once you do all of that you actually pick up how the best screen writers in hollywood or bollywood for that matter how they write stories how they write dialogues and so it being definitely i advocate i also advocate a lot of movie watching and sitcom watching and these two will really help all aspiring uh, writers and one thing that came out of you know this movie watching it just came to my mind is that one of your books you know you're planning to make a movie on that can you give us a bit of idea on it <laughs> so uh, actually one of my uh, books uh, right now it's very, very early stages of discussion is being considered for a movie adaptation but if you if you see the if you see this one acts for life and career uh, this book there's a section and you would have exactly i think you're doing it better than i have so there's a section in terms of how movie scripts are written and you would have seen the whole chapter in terms of how movie scripts are written in terms of uh, how mathematics is used how emotions are used and i think that that's a phenom- phenomenal chapter actually very interesting chapter uh, that you should uh, read yeah so we'll go back again to the consulting part you know i have heard a number of friends of mine you know telling that bosses are sometimes you know not supportive enough you know uh, there's a <laughs> lot of heated arguments also happening uh, you know one of the things which come to the mind especially for people who are just entering into their post mba career and it becomes really important if they, if they don't have a previous work ex before coming to an mba is to how to handle different kinds of bosses do you have a mantra for that uh see it's a difficult question and you know for all the uh, young people who are uh, listening to this session you will have bad bosses so to give you a number if you work with 10 people seven you'll get along with two or three you won't there is no mantra to be honest people have their own styles so if your boss is a micromanager you will figure out a way to communicate more with that boss 
if your boss is someone who does have no time for you you'll figure out a way to work with that guy you will see how your teammates handle him and you'll try to get used to that so there is no mantra people have their own styles in some cases the bosses are so bad that uh, people leave the companies and the teams they work for so the one thing that is assured is you will meet bad bosses people will have to learn and ad- adapt their styles to get used to them yeah i this i do remember one of the things you know which my chro in the previous company told me while i was having not that good boss is that rishikesh take it as a chance to learn this and uh, you know always and always whenever he used to meet me over a cup of coffee and i was like hey, sir you know things are not working out now you know for the past two months he's like this is a chance to work because you know i got this chance after four years of my career you are getting it just after one year so take it as a chance <laughs> yeah yeah but but you know it should also be known that uh, uh, bosses can be the single biggest source of stress in anybody's life uh, in terms of uh, toxins so i mean uh, if if it is getting too much sometimes it's better to just move on i mean you should obviously yeah. try you should not leave at the first uh, hint of discomfort but if it's getting too much you should move on and how are you as a boss yeah i would assume i'm a good boss <laughs> i mean no other way but i think some of the uh, some of what i have the research i did for the book actually helped me understand uh, in terms of some of the gen z buyer values and the way generation z and the young millennials how they want to do and uh, this is something i talk about in the book also that they want a lot of freedom they want to create impact they don't want micromanagement so you give them a piece of work you give them a broad outline and uh, that then you just don't handhold them then let them do it and after some time say once a week you have a checkpoint how things are going and if things are going fine or else you just coach them i i think that's the best way to handle them and uh, you should be encouraging of people's alternate careers every millennial will have an alternate career whether it's playing singing and you should encourage that and have a deep respect for private life you know uh, what happens is the way we indians are we believe uh, once somebody works for you they are slave labor no matter which big corporate you work for so i think you should respect people's private lives over the weekends uh, uh, small things like don't send emails before 9 am don't send emails after 7 pm i think th- th- those are small things that uh, obviously i try which came out of my research in terms of what millennials of this side but don't you think sandeep even all the bosses will know this because you know they do study a lot of stuff and you know and that is one of the reasons why they reach good places in their life one of the reasons maybe so do you, do you think the system is as such or you know uh, which actually makes them behave in in certain ways i think what happens is when they were say very young uh, their bosses treated the same way and a lot of them have not recognized that the world has moved on if you don't the people under you will leave and nobody will want to work for you you will fail so i think a lot of them who behave like that uh, don't understand this and be the change once they see that all their mates are leaving and they have nobody else to work for them i think that's when they learn the hard way but the ones who are mature and they see the writing they keep their style yeah okay so and since you have worked for two different companies and you know two companies and you have worked for a very long period of time it becomes you know seriously very difficult for people to survive in a company for more than 2 3 years you know looking at the trends which is which is coming up because yeah, most of my yeah. friends you know who actually graduated in 2018 if uh, if i take the data 60% of them have already left their first company so it's within you know 3 uh, years of their of their career so how do you survive and the second thing is is also that sandeep there has been a lot of things talked about that you know the company starts treating an employee as if you know he or she is not capable enough he, if he or she is not switching after 2 3 years such kind of a, you know things do usually come up on linkedin and all how much do you agree with it and and how do we survive you know how do we have a longer career with a particular company see it's a it's a good question your observation is right that the duration that coming down in terms of how long people work for companies my my personal view is whichever company or whichever job you join you should give it uh, two years at least because in two years a company will uh, give you a lot of exposure whether it's different regions different different cases different projects different bosses different departments so in two years company gives you a, a fair source you have the chance to get a promotion in about 2 to 2 and a half years. so i think less than two years until something seriously goes wrong you should not leave so that that is point number 1 
point number two uh, is how you survive i think it's about making sort of good friends and the peers who will support you also about identifying who are the bosses who are good and who are the bosses who are not so good and trying to work as much as possible with the good set of people and trying to avoid as much as the bad set of people now obviously it is not in your hand but how much ever you can you should uh, try and do that so ideally identify a set of mentors identify a set of good people and try and stick to them as long as you can i think that is the secret to success over a, a period of time the third point which is said that if you stay too long in a company sometimes the company takes you for granted i think there is merit to this i generally think there is merit to it uh, i i don't believe uh, unless your career is going on a super fast track that uh, you should stay very very long so if you so for example if the regular or fast track is every 2 to 3 years a movement will happen in terms of title and if you don't see that happening i think you should consider moving on after some time because if you don't uh, once the company is not pushing your case up and if you don't then the company knows you are not market worthy and they will not take you seriously so and if you're not getting consistent growth you should move on i mean you should not be scared of uh, taking the shift great and uh, and now the numbers will come although you know they are boring nowadays you know uh, you know just <laughs> after cat we actually you know find it very boring <laughs> <laughs> and you talked about pagal guy and all right inside the book right uh, <laughs> this actually reminded me of those days as well like jape mock test dekhe aate the aur fatafat wahan pe test uh, test ka score dalte the bro is bar 99 percentile aaya hai so shall we just take one calculation where and if you actually talked about ki if you save this much and then you know uh, this will go on go on go on and then and then you know you will have you you'll have one crore very easily uh, you know by the time you are 30 years old if you, if considering the fact you know there are some clauses like you know you enter into an mba at an age of 22 or 23 24 years something like correct. that correct you will easily have one crore uh, with you and then you know that that gives you a lot of financial stability and that's you know i completely agree with it you know one crore in the account you know gives a lot of satisfaction and gives a lot of you know security you know i i won't be insecure yeah. with with it and then you should go for you know maybe your callings or something like this uh but if somebody just coming out of an mba school and he has got a good job let's suppose you know bcg or mckinsey or accenture or 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 pwcs of the world and or maybe fmcg companies as well so if he has a good idea in his mind and if he wants to to give it a try should he go should he go ahead with it should he take that risk or it is always wise to have some experience before you you go for a startup see i think it's a million dollar question uh, it's a million dollar question a lot of people ask this what i suggest uh, people should do when they have a very good idea is uh, you don't leave your job you try it out in parallel uh, if it's uh, most things today are about making an app so try it in parallel try for 6 months see how it is going if it scales up and if you're really successful then you take a call and you do it my personal recommendation is an individual style is that you should work for about 5 years before you really take the entrepreneurship plunge because what you learn in business school is not really going to make you succeed as a businessman Uh, you need to work five years, travel the length and breadth of this country, understand how consumers behave, have a few industry contacts, be practical about what is possible, pay out your loans, have some money in the bank, have a bit of maturity. Uh, you'll have to handle private equity people, funding. You'll have to handle who work for you. So some of it comes with experience. So my personal experience uh, suggestion is five years of work ex always helps. but if you have a brilliant idea if you genuinely think you have a brilliant idea work on it in parallel give it 6 months see how it scales up if it scales up really well you might take the plunge if it doesn't you continue with the job is how i would say it and how do you manage failures like you know if one startup does, doesn't work out you know you do some other one and then and then when do you realize that you know this is this is a failure because because you know that is a question which is there because you know you 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 create a product you you take it to the market and for sometimes it doesn't work out but but inside you have some sort of a belief that nahi ye chal sakta hai to kab you know when should you take a pivot and when and when should you you know decide on ki nahi ye nahi chalega so i think this is a very individual question but uh, the way at least i approach it is 
when i started off my career the secondary writing career i had given myself 10 years and i had told myself ki agar 10 saal tak kuch nahi hua to shayad main dekhunga kya karna hai and my real success came in year number 9 so so that's how a, a lot of people if you are starting off i would say you should say i will give it 2 years i will give it 2 years and no matter what happens i will stick to it for 2 years after 2 years i will look at a hard reality i think you give yourself a certain amount of time and uh, handling failure is very critical and that's why i say work experience matters because uh, when you go through education in india what happens is everybody is a 95% everybody is doing very well in acads people are used to succeeding 10 out of 10 times but when you come to the real world you will realize that you only succeed 2 out of 10 times you will lose 8 out of 10 times and the way you handle failure is you accept then say that out of 10 transactions i will win two if i go for 10 b2b sales assignments i will win one if i win one i will be very happy nine i will fail so i think i think that's how you have to look at failure but you will lose 80% of the time of all transactions you are a part of yeah and from this one question comes to my mind is that you know mo- m- many of the startups these days are capitalizing on instant gratification thing which is you know right now becomes you know has 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 you know quite quite actually occupied our mind so we are not re- like you told you know so guys you know 10 years and you achieved success the success started coming from 9th year onwards and and this is something which requires a lot of perseverance right uh, you know you don't quit you know you keep the feedback loop on but the kind of a culture which is which has started developing slowly where you know people are looking for instant gratification jaise ki you know i was talking to one of the guys and even you you you, you must have seen that you know uh, the graduates who just joined the company they want that ki kuch bhi acha karo to fatafat boss ka acha support mil jana chahiye right if uh, you know boss should be there ki, you know what he was telling is that ki agar ye thoda bhi acha karte na to to i make sure ki agli ghante mein main isko congrats ya kuch aisa bol dun nahi to kya hoga ki ek din agar gap ho gaya so you know he will start taking me somewhere else to is instant gratification wali cheez ko you know kaise you know dur kiya ja sakta hai because jab tak ye cheez rahegi tab tak perseverance wali feeling nahi aayegi managing failures wala cheez hum you know maybe it becomes very difficult i think it's about individual styles to be honest uh, it's about individual people if you are assuming every day recognition or every day success is very very difficult I, i i think you should whenever people take up careers so like i said if you are joining a new company you should give yourself 3 years you should give yourself 3 years and at the end of 3 years take a call you should not look for a very good message from your boss every day it doesn't work the real world doesn't work that way if you are starting a new venture you should give yourself 2 years and so do saal ke baad mai evaluate karunga kya ho raha hai till 2 years you just put your head down you start working if you are making a career in a high risk profession like creative arts you should give yourself 10 years and say after 10 years i will take a look and how i am so i think that maturity is very important because if you don't have that maturity you will not succeed you will go into depression two days your boss doesn't say good things you will go into depression after that so you have to you have to give your certain number of uh, years no matter what yeah and now i have got a question uh, jo ki you know you know indian society context mein bahut valid hai jaise ki you know people are crazy about double i right ki you know they want to get into iit iit mein nahi hota hai to 4 saal wo engineering college mein jaake ye sochte hai ki bro ab iit mein nahi hua i am to jana hai right so you know 4 saal unka isme nikal jata hai bahut saare log hote including me mere mera bhi tha ki iit mein nahi hua ab to matlab double i to chahiye yaar kisi kisi bhi tarike se top b school mein jana hai so and then you gave you know you wrote an entire chapter on how to decide a b school inside you know hmm. this particular book right you 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 talked about how to decide a b school and then you also talked about how to decide you know between a foreign b school and a and an indian b school to jahan pe jis society mein you know bacche double i ke liye itna zyada you know crazy hai not because of the fact that ki मतलब कुछ केसेस में होता भी है कि उनको मैनेजमेंट एजुकेशन ग्रास्प करना है जस्ट बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ फैक्ट कि स्टेटस डिवन सोसाइटी हमारा हमारा कंट्री ज्यादा है सो हाउ डू यू हैंडल डिसीजन मेकिंग इन दैट केस यू नो यू नो सिंस यू नो द लॉजिक्स दैट यू हैव गिवन इज यू नो द पॉइंट दैट यू पुट इन इज वेरी लॉजिकल बट बिफोर दैट डोंट यू थिंक संदीप की वो कल्चर जो है उसको भी चेंज करने की जरूरत है कि आप इस तरीके से सोचो लॉजिकली सोचो या जरूरत तो है ऑब्वियसली कल्चर चेंज करने की जरूरत है एंड टू बी फेयर देर इज अमाउंट ऑफ सोसाइटल प्रेशर एट गाई वन हाउ मच यू कैन बक दैट प्रेशर इज ऑब्वियसली वेरी डिफिकल्ट आई नो केसेस वेर वॉन्ट टू केसेस गॉर्न टू आई आई थिंक इट केम दिस ईयर लास्ट ईयर 
wanted to study a niche field, engineering physics, the top hundred AIR, and his family forced him to study electronics, but he wanted to study engineering physics, and he had buckled down the pressure and he took it. So all of this will be there. Uh, there is a certain element, but I think uh, I think society changes a bit on its own. Now, to be honest with you, I think the charm of IIT and IIM has gone down a lot to what it was say ten years ago, because so many opportunities have come today. You honestly don't need. in your words the two i kind of tag uh, on your resume to really make it big you can uh, i don't think you need it as much as you needed it 10 years ago so uh, there, there are so many stories that people have given up an engineering degree gone and studied history then gone outside in and done something else so i think one the charm is going down two i think people are accepting that the children will do something potentially something very different i think it's changing but Uh, but i think students also just uh, need to ask themselves what they want to do and just go with it and sadeep you know your answer actually reminds me of uh, you know one other person i was talking to and uh, and and i just asked him the same question and you know he told me ki uh, kirishikesh what you used to do and and i was like hmm. sir i do used to respect a lot jo jinka iit bombay mein hua tha and i was not able to get into <laughs> iit he was like ki kyun hmm. so then i was like you know See, see, I respect them not because of the fact that they went into IIT Bombay. I respect them because of the fact that they were sincere at one point of time, and they studied hard while I was not studying at that point of time. And life becomes a staircase. So you know, considering whatever you you told Sandeep, I completely agree. But then still, people who go into IIT and IIM do deserve a lot of respect, and they should not be rebuked. Like you know, uh, many a times it happens over social media as well. you know many uh, many times you know people take up this iii brand and they start telling that you know most of the job offers are going to them you know but but then we don't you think we should also realize that once upon a time for one year or maybe two years these people really worked very hard for achieving whatever you know yeah. uh, they yeah. put into yeah yeah true that is true so it's either hard work or intellect either they are very smart or they have worked very hard or a combination of both so yes that recognition is there but i think what people should also realize is that an iit or an iim is really a start it gives you a very good start it's like in a if as we for cricket in a test match it only means that the first five overs you have scored 30 for no loss but there are four and a half days or really five days of cricket to be so just because you've gone there doesn't mean you'll do very well just a good start that's all it yeah. is and now the question mba after a work experience or mba before work experience because still we find that in indian b school a considerable portion of students who join the b schools are freshers so what will be your view point on this i think the most important i write about it in the book also that if you are keen on doing an mba from outside india i think the key decision factor is only whether in india or outside india if you are keen on doing it outside india then you should work for 3 4 years and then you should go for an mba outside uh, india if you have made up your mind that i'm going to work uh, in india and take an indian mba if that's what you've made up your mind then you should try and finish it off as soon as possible so write cat every year write all the exams every year the first decent option you get you should pick it up that's how i would approach it yeah and then you know the question is keep uh sometimes you know uh, sandeep we have seen a lot of uh, people leaving very established companies um you know like a lot of established companies fmcg or consulting companies to join startups right uh, which are which are these days you know uh, coming up in a large number and they are they they are raising a lot of funds so why do you think is it is it actually happening like you know people living in established xyg brand to join an abc brand which has just come up although the salary is similar or maybe the salary is a little bit higher on this side but uh, but how do you take this like you know people are ready to breach their comfort zone come out, coming out of their insecurities or something else i think it's two things i mean a lot of my friends have done what you're saying one is they genuinely see the ability to create a mass impact so if you are in a traditional career you're probably handling one brand or one function or one project and here they see they are genuinely able to create impact over a period of time i think that impact is something people really consider secondly i think uh, maybe like you said it's outside the comfort zone if they are doing that one thing for 10 years with a startup it gives them that ability to do a lot more across breadth and across depth i think that could be another one but my uh, i think some people also have the motive for money 
because if things work out you make disproportionate money but uh, the primary objective i think why people do it is the ability to create impact on the ground yeah and especially for the startups out there uh, you know it becomes very you know if if you've got a new idea and you want to test it inside the market there are a number of ways you you can do that but uh, but how do you so how do you study consumer behavior since you have worked for a number of companies you, you must be consulting them uh, you know uh, as far as the strategy consulting goes so how do the startups find out you know the right consumer behavior how do how do they study that if you could suggest some ways yeah yeah, yeah sure so there's a fairly standard way of studying consumer behavior uh, i'm assuming you can hear me clearly right yes 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 yeah okay. so uh, see the fairly standard ways in which consumer behavior is studied first of all there are uh, some industry reports you'll hear about nielsen regularly so you have these industry reports that uh, give you a good view in terms of consumer behavior that that is one source second source of consumer behavior is primary research whether it's an agency doing research for you or you go out in the market and meet consumers uh, qualitative and quantitative that's a very good uh, avenue to understand industry research the third is to speak to some experts there are many industry experts who understand what is happening with consumer behavior and that is the third stream of input that comes in so i think a combination of these three inputs generally gives a very good view of what is happening to the consumer great uh and now you know let us go back to to education now a little bit you know a lot of innovation is being happening you know especially in the edtech field and especially in this covid times and a number of startups have also come up you know uh, a number of things have been taught to to school children and then college students as well uh but but innovation seems to be lacking once it come to tier 2 and tier 3 cities and villages inside india uh, in terms of the quality of education education which is there over there so how can we do something you know uh, or maybe you know some sort of an idea which uh, somebody can work upon so that we can tap into that market because because sandeep i would tell you like you know uh, whenever i go out for for a holiday i will pass through villages and i will you know you know have an interaction with a number of people out there and there are some people who don't even know how to use youtube so forget about the online medium although the internet uh, the penetration as per your book has increased to 700 million now but still there are there are a number of you know uh, kids there are a number of people you know who do not know how to use that online medium uh, maybe you know it has not reached to them what else what are some of the innovations which you think can be adopted to to improve the quality of education at these you know uh, in these villages in india yeah so on a lighter note people should need to get a copy of this that is what uh, needs to be done to improve the uh, quality of education but uh, education on a serious note i think the question is valid see whatever the answer is technology will have to play a big part in it i mean like you rightly said the bottom 20% villages in india probably don't have access to it but if you have to deliver quality education it uh, has to be technology led so the answer is Uh, how fast is that technology adoption happening so with jio coming in i think a lot more villages have come in the 4g bandwidth and uh, also if you see the farming space so many farmers the uh, 50 60% of farmers in india use youtube now so it is increasing a lot the answer is technology uh, that is the only way the quality education can be given so there are many business schools who are doing a lot i know with i am bangalore they used to do that they made a lot of course material free uh, they made a lot of video lectures free so anyone anywhere in the world can listen to the best of professors and learn from them so i think the institutes are doing their bit and once technology comes in that's the best way to uh, best way to increase the education the good thing actually for covid what has happened is talent is no longer restricted to cities if you have a good web designer sitting in a village in assam because of covid that person might now get a chance that in a way is uh, one of the benefits of uh, covid that has happened so you just don't need to be in the big 3 4 cities to get any job yeah but then there is one question uh, sandeep you know it creates a lot of confusion jaise ki agar mere ko cyber security pe course karna hai to main udemy pe jata hu main mere ko 10 courses dikhte hain then i go to you know coursera i find 10 courses over there different different platforms pe and the same thing same thing happens with students as well jo iit ka preparation kar rahe hain abhi you know if they go on an academy if they go on vedantu you know a kind of a confusion sa create nahi ho gaya aur iske kaan you know don't you think that students are not able to complete uh, you know the things in totality they are just you know swapping between different tabs on their internet see choice is good you know honestly it's about if it is about more choice it is good and 
the so the way a student or professional should think is i should post because everybody else is doing a course what are the courses i genuinely need if i need to sit for a placement interview is uh, rishikesh can i just plug my charger in for a minute sorry i think my battery what i uh, was saying is people so one choice is good the more platforms you have the better it is for the consumers or students second is students should not blindly just end up doing courses if you are sitting say for placements you should really ask yourself what is the three skill sets which i am missing is it python programming java programming if sitting for a b school you should ask yourself what am i really missing is the knowledge of economics financial statements and only do those because doing more at low quality is not the answer doing a few at high quality is the answer that's how people should approach it that's a great insight actually uh, sandeep meko bhi so uh, ye samajh mein aa gaya you know doing doing the high quality is important doing you know high quantity yeah. is not important ki exactly sab jagah se sab kuch pad gaya exactly exactly acha ye you know uh, sandeep so you know there is you know uh, a thing like b schools mein na kuch companies ka bahut hype banaya jata hai you know usually once we enter into the b school we are like you know we have to get into this company this is this is the dream company that you should aim for और और होता क्या है जैसे यू नो फॉर मेनी ऑफ अस लाइक यू नो वी हैव फेस दैट कि दो साल में उस टाइप का माइंडसेट बन जाता है कि यार इसी कंपनी में जाने के लिए हम यहाँ आए हैं रैर देन यू नो कीपिंग इनसाइड योर ऑन सेल्फ एंड थिंकिंग दैट कि मैं कहाँ पे अच्छा काम कर सकता हूँ यू हैव नॉट रिटर्न मोर अबाउट दिस इन साइड यू नो वाइल यू हैव यू नो you know written a lot of stuff about fmcg companies about the banking sector about the consulting you know how you know what kind of a career do they offer so i would like to have a little bit of insights on that see this you know what happens when you enter a business school you've gone through the same i'm sure consults have a lot of glamour uh, investment banks have a lot of glamour so uh, i think students tend to follow that and i have also done it there's nothing wrong in it uh, i think at 22 23 most people don't know what they want to and it's normal and when you don't know what to what you want to do it's best to just follow the herd so and that's why people do it there's nothing wrong in it i have seen enough students who've said that i want to get into product marketing roles and i'm okay only doing that But typically this realization comes after a few years of work ex so if you are a young student going in not sure what you want to do in life it's perfectly all right to follow the herd and try and in 5 6 years you'll anyway come to know what you want to do so there's nothing wrong in that is what i'm saying it's perfectly all right yes and then you know comes a very important question jo ki mere dimag mein bahut sara time se hai mujhe aapse puchna hai ki bahut baar aisa hota hai ki 2 saal hum ek particular segment mein kaam kar rahe hote hain and then we decide ki nahi yaar ab dusre domain mein jana hai because i think that you know this is not this is not something in which i i, I want to work in फिर जब आप दूसरे डोमेन में जा रहे हो तो जो तो आपका जो सीवी होता है वो दो तीन साल तक यू नो उस शेप में नहीं नहीं होता है बिकॉज यू नो यू हैव बीन वर्किंग इन ए कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट सेक्टर ऑल टूगेदर बट अब आपको दूसरे सेक्टर में जाना है तो उस केस में हाउ डू यू यू नो यू नो हाउ डू यू मैनेज टू गेट ए गुड जॉब स्पेसिफिकली जो आपका पे स्केल है पिछले कंपनी में पिछले सेक्टर में उसी पे स्केल पर अगर आप किसी नए सेक्टर में जाना चाह रहे हो सो हाउ डू यू डू दैट बिकॉज आपके पास तो कोई वर्क एक्सपीरियंस वो है ही नहीं यू आर ए न्यू कमर नाउ Correct, correct. So I'll give you a classic example. If most management graduates have this. If they have done three years of sales, they've been their sales managers, and they say that I'm going to leave my existing company and try to become a brand manager in a new company. It's exactly that. This is a classic. It's very difficult. It doesn't happen so easily. The best way if you're looking to shift function to the existing company. So if you're moving from sales to marketing, the best way for you to do it is in the existing company. Or if you're looking to move. Uh, sometimes you will move from say your company to e-commerce or startup i think that's the other alternative uh, what people have uh, to gain some experience if you have more experience say four years five years and you want to give a whole pivot and after five years you can't start as a fresher in a new company sometimes the best way to do it is a second mba that's the that's the way people should think about it but if you're looking so for a function change it has sorry <laughs> <laughs> These are all the uh, ma- ways of changing, uh, you know, switching sectors. Yeah. Because ये yeah. ये usually हो रहा है मतलब you know because once we come out of the B school तो starting में हम चले जाते हैं कहीं पे and then we realize कि दो साल के बाद नहीं यार ये नहीं करना है you know we have to do right. something different and then once we right. start floating the CV तो एक जो feedback मिलता है वो ये मिलता है कि तुम्हारा CV इसके you know it's not uh, you know in the same way as we were actually looking for. Consulting में you know uh, career you know if somebody wants to make 
मेक ए करियर इन कंसल्टिंग तो एक एक स्टीरियो टाइप है और मे बी यू नो काइंड ऑफ स्विपिंग जनरेशन है कि आपकी अकेडमिक्स बहुत अच्छी होनी चाहिए यू नो योर अकेडमिक्स शुड बी वेरी गुड इज इट राइट संदीप और यू नो समी हु इज इन यू नो हुज गॉट इज अकेडमिक्स इन सेवेंटीज ऑल्सो यू नो कैन गेट इन टू कंसल्टिंग See, you have to understand why the consulting firms have a wide stereotype has taken birth. Consulting typically involves very long hours. Okay, very long. Sixty hours a week is minimum. Goes to eighty hours a week. And it's not that all sixty to eighty hours you will be doing cutting edge work, which you know, you have so much motivation to do. Some of it was boring and dry. And when you are doing boring and dry, but you need to churn out at a high quality. A certain amount of sincerity is required. A certain amount of sincerity is required, and often high academics is a proxy for that. So you might be doing dull, boring. Well, oh, gisna, jo gisu hota hai na, wo academics se pata lagta hai, and a certain amount of gisne ki ability hai. That is why this principle has come in. To answer your question, if you don't have good academics, can you succeed in consulting? No, you obviously can. There are many people who have, in your the question you asked, who will be seventies or eighties have done very well. But in my view, it is a smaller percentage because what happens is when you get such people, they might not have the ability to do say long, long hours of work, which clearly is not motivating, and that is when they struggle. So it can be done, but it's difficult. and one of the problems which especially people from you know uh, good b schools face is that ki jab wo company mein naye naye jaate hain to unko unka salary scale thoda high ke high hota hai and you know uh, as compared to people who have been working inside the company but they are not from that good b school will be very much clear over here to wahan pe thoda conflicts arise wo hone lagta hai and you know what they found out is that ki sometimes there there is a group created inside a particular company you know uh, talking like this ki yeah you know these people have been you know coming from good b schools and that is why they have been paid more us case mein aise situations ko kaise manage kiya jaye because they there seems to be a lot of resistance coming up yeah aisa nahi hai so typically if you see a lot of uh, indian conglomerates or fmgs most management grad come as management trainees and the person who will be reporting to you will be 25 years work ex and will be probably getting 60% of his salary typically happens in fmcg so uh, i don't think there is resistance people know the model what happens is the person who's coming on this pedestal needs to prove himself or herself very quickly if you prove if you prove within 3 to 6 months you have that skill either leadership or planning or analysis or communication you will start seeing that over a period of time the respect comes in also uh, this population is called the ranker population Uh, they have seen many people ahead of you who uh, before you who've come at a higher pedestal done well and now doing leadership roles so a lot of them have even got used to this mindset ki 25 saal ka chokra aayega hamara boss banega humse do guna kamayega gyan dega but 10 saal mein division head karega they have seen this model work very well so i think that resistance is not that high because people have done it but if you're coming in new you have to prove your credibility or else you will lose respect within these people very easily That is so relatable, actually. Yes, and the first time we were talking, six months ago, you know, there was a lot of resistance, and then when I, when I started taking initiatives and all, and then these people, you know, started uh, praising me in front of my boss as well. Ki haan, yeah. you know, yeah. education is doing so well. Site pe bata hota hai, you know, even if we are out, you know, this guy is there. This is this is re- really a great insight. Ki you know, uh, lead by example kind of a thing, Sandeep. Like, right. correct. right acha now i will go to you know you know a little bit about your childhood because bahut sara time ho gaya hoga aapko to thoda sa aapko remind karana zaruri hai ki even you were a kid not only time boliye so how were you as a child uh, you know where were you born and brought up and how was your childhood like like uh, mummy papa bahut zara uh, you know padhai pe dhyan dete the or you were like ki extra curricular activities and all that stuff you used to take part so i i was born in calcutta then stayed there for a first few years then went to hyderabad uh, was there till class 8 then came to bangalore from class 9 i have been in bangalore so i think in terms of uh, i think that's why my parents were very liberal so i was into a lot of extra curricular and uh, but uh, i think it was also understood that academics you had to do well so i was a lot into debating theater i used to play a lot outside school so all the extra curricular were very strong but uh, the my expectation was academics you have to be in the top 1 top 2 top 3 so i think that was always there 
and uh, that's how it has been so uh, i th- i think my parents were always very clear that holistic development is very critical whether it's physical education speaking theater all of uh, all of this is very very important and i think that that really helped a lot of what i do with writing and speaking right now probably has my genesis is having taken theater classes in class 7 so i think that way was really good yeah yeah and some of it you know came from your culture in calcutta as well because you know bengalis you know usually correct. have a great flavor for writing correct 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 theater and thing yes yes and uh, and how did you decide you know whether you have to take maths or biology after your 10th standard because you know that is a million dollar question for these students <laughs> Yeah, it is simple. I I think I found maths easier. I found by the tougher, so I took maths. It is as simple as that. So uh, that is the only way to do it. Yeah, what you find easier and what you like more. So there was no way I'm I was going to decide those rats and everything. There was absolutely no way I was going to do that. So it was very easy decision for me. And did you prepare for engineering entrance exams like JEE and all WBJ? not these exams uh, not wbj i prepared for a few but to be honest i was also confused between law and engineering so uh, i i also thought about law as a career for some time then i also thought about engineering so i didn't uh, i i didn't prepare for too many i did do the basic work uh, but uh, didn't do say you know people go to quota and prepare for it i didn't do all of that then uh, So didn't your parents tell that you go to quota and prepare for IIT otherwise your life is not worth <laughs> No I think my parents were very very liberal that way I mean they were very okay with me doing either a law career or even journalism or engineering I think they were very okay with that So I think the only point has been do to life but what you do do it well I think that's the point that has come from then So even when it came to writing and I have three books now uh, their only point has been you want to do it do it, but do it well Uh, don't just do it for the sake of doing it. I think that's been a guiding philosophy all this. Yeah, and Sandeep, you know, so how do we develop our strength? Do you think that you know it's kind of a genetic or it's developed over a period of time? I think I am of the belief it's developed over a period of time. So if you are a, a management professional, it comes through experience, it comes through reading, it comes through. doing a lot of work individually taking on challenging assignments traveling so it you you build it on your own nobody is born a, a great manager or a great professional i think i mean god might have give, given you a bit of iq but eq elements of eq empathy business intelligence all of this is developed uh, through your own uh, means you're not born a ceo definitely yeah So why do people say that you know you should capitalize on your strengths because you know since you told that key strengths can be developed over a period of time so even if something is my weakness can't i convert that into a strength why should i capitalize on my strengths you can theoretically see it's about uh, something called multiplier effect if you have uh, 10 units of effort you should ideally put 8 units into which are your stronger areas because you will get much more return and the two units of effort you should build on your weaknesses so that they become strong so that that's what they mean capitalize on your strength this proportionate portion of your time you should do what you're good at because your chances of success increase but you should also put a certain portion of time in what you're not good at so that over a period of time that also becomes average yeah and now for those people you know who have not been able to you know uh, who have not managed uh, to get into the so called top b schools in india and across the world and they think that they have not got the good you know starting push so as you wrote inside the book you know getting into a good college is just a good start push that you get but you know ultimately right. a lot of things a lot of other things matter as well so for them what will be your suggestion like you know uh, you know because many a times you know they feel demotivated looking at you know the people of their age or maybe you know uh, you know you know who passed out of graduation just because of the difference in college there is a lot of difference in salary how should they manage that setback see it's not a setback i think what they should look at is this is a 30 year this is like a test series we think of india australia test series a good b school basically means in the first hour of the first test in adelaide you have basically at 40 for no loss and people should realize there are three test matches and in the same test match there are four and a half days still left so one this is a 30 year game two if you come from say a tier 2 b school and you've not got the first push 
what you should look at is wherever you are give it two to one and a half years show that impact learn as much as you can create that impact and then take progressive shift go to a better place then go to a better place and that's how you shift even after five to six years if you believe things are not moving after having tried all of this then there is a case to either try the one year mba or an international mba to pivot your career back into orbit but uh, the one mistake you should not do is compare if you see a high achiever who's your peer going all around social media bragging mm-hmm. about his salary just mute his notification and block him you need a <laughs> block him mute him you will lead a better life i think that is the biggest yeah, i got this from the book guys and i have already blocked seven people i have already <laughs> blocked <seven. laughs> you should you should do that that's that's a very practical way to approach it yeah um so you know one of the things you know we we all think about right not all but most of us think about writing right and uh, we all start at some point of time we do write one or two pages or three pages and four pages and then the motivation goes away and then you know we are we are all blank for uh, you know uh, for a number of days and then again after one year we decide that obviously kenge what all things are are very important sandeep if you know if somebody wants to become a writer कुछ चीजें जो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एक अच्छे राइटर के अंदर आई थिंक सबसे बड़ी मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज डिसिप्लिन इट इज इट इज हार्ड वर्क व्हिच मींस दैट एट लीस्ट व्हाट आई डू इज आई ट्राई टू राइट 1000 वर्ड्स अ वीक व्हिच इज 3 पेजेस अ वीक एंड आई हैव डन दिस एवरी वीक सो इफ यू कीप राइटिंग इज ओनली व्हेन यू विल स्टार्ट गेटिंग आउटपुट एंड यू विल गेट बेटर एट इट इट इज लाइक प्लेइंग अ गेम ऑफ क्रिकेट द मोर टाइम यू स्पेंड इन द नेट यू टू बैट एवरी डे इन द नेट एंड द मोर टाइम यू स्पेंड इन द नेट यू बिकम अ बेटर बैट्समैन So I think that discipline and consistency is very important. Point one, point two is about uh, reading and, like I said, read the right set of books, uh, watch the right kind of movies to learn. Uh, is what is important. But without discipline and uh, consistency, you will go nowhere. So uh, for people who are seeing this, this is not a profession uh, that that seems very glamorous. That that seems a lot of success. But uh, every successful writer will tell you that there have been eight to nine years of failure. before things are actually moved and if you're coming into this profession you should be ready to give 7 8 years of uh, just hard work without reward and then things start picking up i think that mindset shift is very important if you're coming here saying i will write a piece and suddenly i become famous it doesn't work that way yeah and then you know once you start writing so you have to find a publishing house as well I means which can you know which can actually publish things for you So how do you do that? Can you tell us the process? Like, जैसे एक बार हमने लिख लिया कुछ तो फिर उसको कैसे लेके जाते हैं मतलब अंत तक? So there are so once you have written a manuscript, uh, all India publishing houses there say ten fifteen major ones. If you go to their website, there is a way you have to there's a format they ask you to submit three chapters, summary of the plot, author profile, and you have to submit that. Uh, then what they do is they take about two months to evaluate and say does the basic summary have potential if they agree to that they ask you for the whole manuscript and they go through the whole manuscript take about another 2 3 months to evaluate so about 4 5 months when you send to a publishing house you will know whether it's yes or no if it's yes you get a contract which you sign the contract and once you get the contract the book goes through two rounds of editing the first round of editing is when there is story editing is the character fine plot fine etc the second round of editing is about grammar editing type setting grammar line by line editing that happens and after that this process takes about 6 to 8 months and then the book goes into production and marketing that's how the typical uh, process works a big trend these days in self publishing because the traditional publishers take quite a few times self publishing if you go to amazon you can do it overnight so a lot of people uh, consider self publishing Uh, the earlier there used to be a taboo about self publishing that publisher ne mila tha self publishing kar rahe ho but i think that taboo has gone now so you'll see a lot of people even considering that too so that's how the process works yeah but then now i have i have a question so how did you write covid things over there inside the book because covid to abhi 6 7 mahine pehle hua hai nahi matlab aisa nahi hai covid started in march uh, and jan se baat shuru ho gayi thi my book uh, went into production i think august so there is enough uh, that we had seen uh, till then that had happened yeah and now you know so you you use a lot of metaphors which actually involve cricket do you have a special love for cricket you know uh, did you used to play that you know is it a kind of a hobby 
you know we all play cricket yeah we've all grown up playing cricket but i think it's easiest to explain concepts using cricketing analogies if you read the book you'll see i i talk a lot about swing bowling ms dhoni and all of that i think it's easiest to explain to audience when they know such a fabulous game that's, that's the reason so the reason i gave you the india australia test series because everybody will understand the point i'm trying to make it's very easy to communicate yes and now you know the question about you know you handling failures and emotions especially from your own life uh, you know since you have been working for you know on you know many you know kind of the high stress projects which actually involve interacting with the clients with the top management with the cxo level people and you know so sometimes you know a lot of setbacks must have come a lot of you know emotional trauma kind of a thing must have come to you so how do you handle that especially especially how do you handle your emotions how do you become emotionally intelligent see i think one of the big changes uh, graduate mba graduates have to make is they have to understand in the real world if there are 10 things you are doing nine or eight or nine you will fail and two or three you will win so if you are going into a sales process uh, out of 10 pitches you get you will win one that's how it works so i think it's important to understand that you will fail most of the time and you should treat everything as a transaction every meeting is a transaction every pitch is a transaction and uh, you keep going through it as a sort of transaction that and tell yourself that 80% of the transactions i will fail in and you just move move on from that it is again in cricketing analogy it is equivalent to a batsman a batsman will i mean sachin tendulkar for all his greatness Uh, scored hundred hundreds out of eight hundred innings he played in. That's twelve and a half percent success. So, the greatest player in the world has twelve and a half percent success in four graduates. So that's how it's treated as a transaction and move on. Thanks a lot, Sandeep. And you know, so so at last, you know, I would like to end this session with something like, you know, this is the book which Sandeep is marketing, but I am not marketing this book. but still you know i <laughs> love to keep this book on my desk because you know one thing is there from an indian context this is something which is completely relatable right because most of us must have faced it you know sometime or the other bahut sare foreign authors ke book padhe ki yahan se mba ye wagera personal finance pe but this will give you a real life you know thing about you know how can you manage your finances well or uh, you know how can you you know take over your insecurities especially in terms of you know your money and all that stuff Uh, how can you manage your emotions and then the case study about you know climbing that mountain in bhutan tiger nest i think yes tiger nest yeah, you know it teaches us a lot of stuff you know and one thing which uh, which which andeep has specifically mentioned about being close to the nature as well because you know you do learn a lot from uh, from that and being original and um, you know you don't have to show off things and you have to take those hobbies as your own you should not take those hobbies you know as kind of things which you just take it up you know just for showing it off but then you should show it off so as to make sure that you keep on following that to agar marathon kar rahe ho to likhe raho ki day 1 pe 10 km chale day 2 pe 20 km chale it will keep on pushing you like this so guys please go and and you know buy this book i will post the the amazon link over here and thank you sir for taking your time it was a great insightful session especially for me Thank you Rishikesh thank you for the opportunity i had a fantastic uh, time talking about this thank you thanks